And joining me now for more on Pelosi's fate is Matthew Iglesias. He is a DailyBeast.com contributor and has a piece about this very issue today. Matthew, good to see you. Good to be here, Nora. You write that the uh, Republicans' efforts to make political hay with Nancy Pelosi may actually backfire. What do you mean? Well, you know, if you look back at why conservatives started this Pelosi effort, it's pretty clear, and I think uh, at the blog Think Progress, they did a good job of documenting it, that what conservatives wanted to do was get Pelosi to back off this talk of doing investigations of what happened during the Bush administration. And <clears throat> President Obama had been clearly signaling to progressives that he really wanted to just sort of move forward and help the Republicans out. But now, by bringing this Pelosi stuff up, there's just no way we can investigate the question of of what was she briefed on without investigating the underlying conduct and looking into seriously the waterboarding, the prolonged shackling, the sleep deprivation, and the other forms of basically illegal torture and interrogation techniques. And yeah, but is... just because Speaker Pelosi is calling for the Truth Commission doesn't mean it's going to happen. No, no, no. But I mean, what happens is, is that by bringing all this attention on Pelosi, they've, I think, made it more likely that it was going to happen. This was an idea previously that Speaker Pelosi was pushing, that a lot of liberals were pushing, but that wasn't going anywhere. And it wasn't going very far because a lot of Democrats wanted to just sort of let it go under the rug. But now that they're pressing her, there's no real choice other than to have a thorough investigation of what happened. Because if we want to talk about what was Nancy Pelosi told and what did Nancy Pelosi know, we have to put that in the context of what actually happened. I hear what you're saying. You know, um, Newt Gingrich today, we've heard some of his comments before. He was actually on the Joe Scarborough radio show, and he had this to say. Listen. I think that to have the person third in line to be president um, say that the CIA misleads us all the time is so utterly irresponsible and such an attack on the uh, men and women who are risking their lives around the country and around the world trying to block terrorism and trying to protect us that she disqualifies herself for being Speaker of the House. And I, I think this is not like an average member. This is not some backbencher who is allowed to, you know, uh, say dumb things. She disqualifies herself from being Speaker of the House. So it sounds like the former Speaker is calling on Speaker Pelosi essentially to resign, says she's not qualified to be Speaker. Well, you know, Newt Gingrich knows a lot about saying stupid things and being forced out of a job as speaker. But the fact of the matter is that, you know, we know the Bush administration covered up what they were doing in terms of torture for years, and they hid it from the American people. So it doesn't strike me as wildly implausible that they would also try to hide it from Congress. But one way or the other, I, I mean, I wasn't in the room, you weren't in the room, Newt Gingrich wasn't in the room. None of us know exactly what happened there. But whatever it is Nancy Pelosi knew about, George W. Bush, Dick Cheney, John on you, Jay Bybee, they knew more. And ultimately, when we have a thorough investigation of what happened, the bulk of the blame has to lie with the architects of the policy, not with a member know, of the opposition I just opposition don't think there's going to be an investigation, Matthew. I know that you're talking about that, but there's not going to be an investigation. The Bush, the, the, excuse me, the Obama administration is the one who would have to sign off on a commission. They have no willingness to do that. The other person that could make it happen is the House Speaker, Nancy Pelosi, who could have one of, uh, sign off on one of her committees. And there's no indication that that's going to happen either. Um, Matthew Iglesias, the Daily Beast. Great to talk to you. I enjoyed your column. Thanks so much. Thank you.